So let's talk about fractals, the mathematical objects that tend to form repetitive patterns that can actually go on forever and even appear at different scales or in different sizes. And though I think most of you are probably familiar with fractals, today we're going to talk about something that nobody knew before. So hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss a completely new discovery of a natural fractal in biology that was discovered completely by accident and literally nobody knew why it existed or what it does. But I guess first just a little bit more about fractals in nature. Obviously, for reasons we still don't really understand, fractals do seem to exist everywhere. But obviously we're not just talking about art or fractals that we create as humans, I'm talking about natural formations such as the ones we see in crystals, for example snowflakes. These are different types of fractals. We also obviously see it in a lot of different phenomena such as lightning, and especially when you use super high voltage lightning to, for example, break acrylic glass. This is sometimes known as the Lichtenberg figure. But I guess one of the most famous examples is probably in food. Romanesco broccoli. A ridiculously complex fractal that you see right here that almost looks like it's not real. Yet this is an actual picture, so it is real. And so today we know that quite a lot of different things seem to form fractals for one reason or another. No matter what scale you go to, either minuscule, microscopic, or even large scales, so basically seeing things from the International Space Station, here's actually one example, in this case different river valleys that seem to form fractals as well, we basically seem to observe them everywhere. With I guess the largest known example being the mysterious cosmic web, something you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. But obviously exactly why these types of structures form fractals is not a question we can always answer. Sometimes it makes sense, I guess sometimes it's more efficient, but sometimes it does not make sense at all. And today we're going to discuss one such example that we've never seen before. Well, let me show you a picture. Here. This was discovered completely by accident. And this is literally the smallest ever fractal, natural fractal, ever seen anywhere. This is the first regular molecular fractal that was discovered in one of the microscopic images from a relatively well-known cyanobacteria. And specifically this is a microbial enzyme, and a really important one, that this cyanobacterium uses to survive. This is actually the bacterium that we're discussing. It's known as Cyanococcus elongatus, and it's basically a typical cyanobacterium that's extremely similar to yeast. It can actually grow really rapidly in a typical sunlit conditions, but it's also able to survive just by creating its own sugars through the process of autotrophy. And so for the past few years, it's been extremely important in various genetic studies because scientists believe they can actually use this particular bacterium for a lot of different purposes to replace, for example, yeast and to make things way more efficient. And so while studying this organism and specifically while trying to identify what's inside of it, and using very advanced electron microscopes, the researchers saw a bunch of stuff that kind of did make sense. It wasn't just one or two, it was all over the place. And more importantly, some of them even started forming more complex shapes. Really complex shapes, as you can see right here. And you might actually already know what this is. This is of course the famous Sierpinski triangle, an extremely well-known fractal that's basically this, an equilateral triangle divided into smaller triangles positioned in a very specific way. And though the triangle itself is named after the famous Polish mathematician Wacław Sierpinski, who you see right here, in reality we've known about this pattern for a very very long time. Here's an example from Italy from 13th century with a triangle visible in this stonework in the Basilica di San Giovanni in Laterano. Now obviously we have no idea how the ancients knew about this, but maybe they've seen it somewhere. But I guess that's not the point. The point is that this is an extremely well-known fractal and it's never actually been seen in nature in such a way. As a matter of fact, not only is this the smallest fractal, it also seems to be one of the most complex. But the obvious question is, what exactly does this do and why is it the way it is? Why is it a fractal? Well, first we have to understand what this actually is and what usually happens in these types of proteins. In essence, this is an enzyme. And it's actually a really important enzyme used in Krebs cycle, the cycle responsible for producing a lot of power for the cell by basically producing ATP, specifically by using this right here. This is a typical enzyme known as citrate synthase 
that's literally present in pretty much every living cell on the planet. And here it's a first step of the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, that produces the energy for the cell known as ATP. And as you might know from biology, ATP is super important. It's everywhere. It's needed for every cell. It's literally our fuel. And all of this always starts with citrate synthase. But when it comes to proteins, they're not always the same. Actually, they're almost never the same. Proteomics, or the study of proteins, is one of the most complicated fields of biochemistry, and even today it's almost impossible to predict what shape a protein is going to take, even if we know its sequence. But normally, in a typical protein, they all seem to assume a relatively smooth shape, like the one you see right here, and they generally create a lot of different formations, with the shape itself responsible for the function, and so the shape is normally kind of important. But this process of self-assembly is also super complex and technically poorly understood. However, in all of the examples we've seen so far, we've never seen anything as complex as what has just been seen in this study. Complex in terms of geometric shapes. It's an actual triangle. And that's basically the first time it's ever been seen. And not just a triangle, but a regular fractal that the enzymes seem to form as more and more assemble into this complex shape. But the first question the scientists were trying to answer is, okay, how exactly is it doing it though? And why is this happening? Well, it turns out here, maybe we'll have an answer. Normally, in a typical protein, when they basically assemble into their shapes and when they start organizing into something more complex three-dimensionally, they usually self-assemble in a very symmetrical way. Each of the chains inside the protein arranges itself in a very symmetrical way relative to its neighbors. And this eventually produces something almost perfect, very, very smooth. At least smooth on very large scales. But in this protein, as these chains start to assemble, they don't seem to do so symmetrically. They actually start forming very strange voids. And so basically, because of that asymmetrical assembly, some of these chains start to form unusual shapes inside, forming larger and larger voids. And these voids eventually start forming fractals. Here is roughly what all of this kind of looks like. And so basically all of this is just a result of some kind of an imperfection or asymmetrical arrangement that surprisingly results in these triangles that then grow larger and larger. And at least that's one of the more preliminary explanations. But then the other question is, okay, but does this actually do anything useful? Normally, in proteins, shapes are everything. And so does this triangle do anything? Is this actually the only way this particular enzyme works? Well, it turns out the answer is no. It does not have to be a triangle at all. As a matter of fact, this triangle is just a more complex shape formed by individual enzymes, and it really does not have to exist. And the scientists even tested this. They genetically modified the bacterium to not produce the fractal by basically changing the enzyme just a little bit, and the bacterial cells didn't care. They grew just as well, they did pretty much the same thing that other cells did, suggesting that these particular triangles don't seem to offer any advantage. Or at least they don't seem to offer any advantage that we can think of yet. And so at the moment this is actually believed to be completely accidental and will potentially disappear once this enzyme mutates and starts to form different shapes. But if this is a mutation, and if this is completely by accident, and if it's actually extremely temporarily, that is one huge accident. Just the fact that this bacterium formed a perfect Sierpinski triangle that basically has absolutely no use makes this one unusual coincidence. Although obviously, realistically speaking, maybe there is an advantage, it just has not been discovered yet. Maybe there is something that it does that we can't understand, and maybe this only affects the bacterium in certain conditions. But since we are seeing this, and since it seems to have no actual use, the main conclusion here is that, well, maybe this is not as uncommon as we think. Maybe these unusual accidents basically happen when the structure is not difficult to construct, such as in this case, where it's basically just a triangle. With the main conclusion being that this is just a result of minor mutations and is most likely going to be lost again in just a few million years. And so this triangle is not here to stay. Especially because it seems to be in just this one species we've found so far. But this is also maybe not unexpected. Since this enzyme is so crucial to life on the planet, and since pretty much all life has it, and it does come in slightly different shapes, it is expected to maybe at some point to evolve into something a little bit more unusual and a little bit more beautiful. Such as the famous Sierpinski Triangle, which is one of the simplest fractals we can think of. 
And so whether this is completely by accident and has no use, or there's something else going on here, we just don't know what yet, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. And since you've learned about the smallest fractal, go check out the video about the largest fractal as well. Anyway, on that note, we'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some updates or someone else discovers something else unusual about this, or once we actually give this a name. But until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.